The Tatums take on television with YouTube Red's brand new high budget scripted drama series, Step Up High Water. Don't move a muscle. You're tuning into the destination for TV superfan discussion, After Buzz TV. And now, let the buzz begin. From executive producers Maria I can't break, I just can't stop, I just can't stop. You guys like Neo? I do. I do like this song a lot. It's a throwback, it reminds me of college. Well guys, we could sit here dancing all show, or we could talk to you guys about why we're listening to this song. Of course, it's by the great Neo, who is a series regular on YouTube's brand new scripted drama show, Step Up High Water. Um, this is a show that's based off of the Step Up franchise, which is apparently a movie franchise. Not apparently. I, I know what it is. I've just never seen any. Um, but we will be reviewing it today here on TV Pilot Reviews. Um, this is a show, to be clear, where we review pilots. We don't review entire shows. We just review the pilot of shows. We don't yet have an after show for Step Up High Water, but depending on how our coverage goes and depending on what y'all think in the comments, we'll consider it. In the meantime, guys, my name is Jeff Graham. If you want to find me online, you can do so on Twitter at Jeffrey C. Graham. And I have three beautiful ladies, two on the panel, one in the booth. Linda, we'll start with you. Hi, guys. Linda and Twee. Linda is so girly all across social media. I am excited to get my groove on. Woo! And I'm Taylor Gates. You can find me on Twitter at alphaba underscore Ann and on Instagram at Taylor underscore Gates. Underscore. Taylor, it's fun to have you on the panel. Oh, Guys, me. Taylor Thanks. was just a mere intern two years ago, and now lowly she's sitting intern. on the panel. Yeah. Not lowly. <laughs> Not lowly. Um, Brianna Phipps, we got you in the booth. Hey, everybody. How are you doing tonight? You guys can find me at bphipps14 on Twitter and Instagram. Um, Taylor, Bree, and I all watched this in the trailer today. Linda, we should have called you. We could have done a viewing party. Oh, yeah. But it would have been weird timing because it was at like 4 p.m. today, which meant you would have had to come and then go and then come. Um, I just hung out all day. Yeah. There you go. Well, next time. If we ever do another <laughs> viewing party, we'll for sure let you know. Um, I am interested to hear what everyone quick thoughts on this show were. Um, quickly before we get into it, just so you guys know, um, Step Up High Water is, I had a log line, oh, and it was a good one. Let me just quickly pull it up. I'm on my computer, going as fast as I can because dead air is bad. Step Up High Water, we're almost there. Step Up High Water is an American drama series, but, oh, dang it. <laughs> just kidding. Uh, so it follows the students and faculty of High Water, Atlanta's most cutthroat performing arts school. That's what the show is. I just wanted to find that log line because I thought it was very concise, unlike me. <laughs> I feel like I've done a better job hosting. Let's just acknowledge it. This is only the first few minutes. Just yeah, the go we're off. just getting the case up. Shake it up. Shake You're it up. Step up. Yes. I've got to step up. <laughs> yeah. So what do you think? What do you think? Let's start um, with Taylor. Yeah, what do you okay. think, Taylor? So I thought that there were definitely some issues with it, but I think that it has a lot of potential. Um, I think that they are going in lots of good directions, and I think that if they can just smooth out some of the wrinkles, then this could be a really promising good show. So pass or play for you and for audiences. I am going to continue playing. I want to see what happens. I'm really intrigued by some of the storylines, and I think it just depends on kind of what your taste is because mm -hmm. I, I don't think the show is for everybody but right. I think that this show could really be great for people who you know like to dance and like kind of um, coming of age young adult dramas and coming of age young adult dramas are kind of your zone right they are cool so I'll be excited to pick your brain that's part of the reason we brought Taylor on this week Linda what'd you think oh uh, my first 10 minutes I was like I can't do this yeah um, but then as I got into the episode and into some of the characters, I was like, okay, I, I get it. Like, I, I get it. But I agree with Taylor. I think that there, for a pilot, mm -hmm. there were some not just minor, kind of major flaws for me mm -hmm. that took me out of what I was watching. Fair enough. Uh, Brianna Phipps? Oh, um, pass or play, Linda. I'm so sorry. I thought I was going to get away with that. <laughs> um, I'm going to say that uh, it's going to be a pass for me personally, but for that like teen hip hop genre, then it's a play if you like that whole thing. Awesome. I agree. Brianna. Um, yeah, I had some issues with the pilot. Um, it just didn't hit for me quite personally. Uh, the dancing I thought was phenomenal, but there was just some lacking in detail and it's just the writing and for me but mm -hmm. i would pass 
but uh, yeah like Linda I would encourage others that were fans of this kind of genre or like just fans of dance in general to play yeah I think I really am about to repeat what everyone said but one thing I will say the show looks really good mm -hmm. it's beautifully shot it's specifically very well lit was one thing I noticed mm -hmm. for those of you who are like gaffer nerds I thought this was a very well lit show um it's funny, though, because for such a high budget, we'll talk about the budget of this show is it's a, kind of YouTube's first really ambitious dive into scripted content. For such great production design and direction, the writing was kind of sloppy, you I, know? And I felt that a lot, actually, that took me out like, really? This? What? What did I you know. just say? Yeah. I think that we talked a little bit about this when we were watching it. I just think it needs to find out what it wants to be. Yeah. Because that there's definitely elements of like the free form type drama, but there's also like they're trying to be HBO at some point. Yes. Right. I think that you kind of have to pick a direction because when you fluctuate between those two, mm -hmm. it just gets a little confusing and uneven. I absolutely yeah. agree with that. And I felt like the editing was a little off for me too. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Like, huh. Where where are we? Are we high action and all of a sudden one one scene specifically when they're introducing Neo's character and they're in the middle of the audition and all of a sudden they just cut to like a Mercedes and then they cut back to I was like huh I don't what is that I don't the care editing, about that yeah a little jarring a lot jarring it took me out of watching the entire show in a flow and I yeah I think to piggyback piggyback off what you're saying um it was paced a little weird too mm -hmm. um even yeah i think partly owing to the editing which maybe was a little shoddy but even from a writing perspective taylor you're a writer as well i thought it was just paced a little i don't know bizarrely for an hour-long drama pilot especially one that's kind of trying to echo what feels like the beats and tone of like a polished kind of freeform pilot mm -hmm. because however you feel about freeform content which i know taylor you would defend which is great mm -hmm. it's pretty polished i think free yes. like the fosters for example which is a show that you loved whether it's for you it's well written and paced for what it is right and it reminded me a lot of kind of the old school freeform like when it was still abc family mm. it reminded me yeah just kind of even the editing and just the style of it yeah. really was kind of a throwback mm -hmm. in some ways to me well, I'm, I think I'm going to be a pass as well. Um, and that might not even owe to this show. This just honestly isn't a show for me. Uh, but yeah, again, to reiterate what everyone said, if you're a fan of this kind of content, give another episode a chance because I do see a lot of potential. And there's a lot of things that I think are admirable about this show. I like the diversity of the cast. Yep. Mm -hmm. We'll talk all about that. But yeah, my biggest gripe was just that I thought it was, for a pilot, pretty sloppily written. Um, and you think if you're spending millions of dollars on an episode maybe spend 10,000 more of that to get one more person in that writer's room. And I don't know. Maybe I'm just saying that because I'm an aspiring television writer. But um, let's go ahead and talk about the development history of this show. Um, as I mentioned, this is kind of YouTube's first foray into really high-budget content. Mm -hmm. I think their goal with this is to sort of compete with streaming services like Hulu and Netflix. Apparently, each of these episodes costs multi-millions of dollars. Wow. That I didn't know. Yeah. It doesn't... Yeah, it's funny because it is well shot, but... This doesn't exactly look like Game of Thrones. like <laughs> Right. Yeah. Or anything that we've kind of reviewed in the last little while. Yeah. Like comparing it to The Chi, uh, which is on HBO, or on Showtime. Showtime, yeah, The Chi. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Linda, we had a conversation before air that I want to try to organically recreate. So let's see okay. if we can reenact it. Right. We're sitting here before we go live, and Linda asks me a question. How much does YouTube Red cost? It's a good question, Linda. I'll look it up real quick. Type, 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 type. Oh, it looks like it's nine ninety nine a month. Ten bucks? <laughs> yeah, I, to, is that crazy to you? That's crazy because I pay ten bucks for Netflix. But this is equal quality content to like The Crown and House of Cards, don't you think? I just don't think so. <laughs> Jeff, you, do we know how many shows YouTube Red currently has on it for that amount? I month? was looking. It's it's hard to tell. Let me really quick again. Where I'm going to quickly not let dead air happen, but I'm going to pull up YouTube Red and go on Wikipedia and look at their original Do you programs. Do think 10 bucks is a lot? I think 10 bucks is a lot. Do you get, like, the other perks of YouTube for That's that? what I want. Do you get, like, no ads and stuff? And and downloading? Yeah. And... That's so I should have done a little more of this research. In terms of original programming, it looks like there are other shows, but none that kind of 
would be like what I would say like Emmy eligible. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. I feel like this is the kind of show where if it were great, it could be like a contender in like these major award shows. You know what I mean? Well, it's even just like Netflix and Hulu are about the same, like what, ten, eleven dollars a month. Yeah. But not only do you get their original shows, you get access to, you know, movies and other television shows that they have on that like so does youtube like you know i know that you can buy like rent or buy movies on youtube like do you get those kind of services through youtube Red? like that's the only way it makes sense for that amount of money for me yeah. let me just quickly read this it provides advertising free streaming of all videos hosted by youtube offline play that's i can get the appeal of that and background playback of videos on mobile screens which i do think is interesting so you could turn on a song on youtube close oh. it out and go to your instant messages instant messages I'm Are a 58 year I'm... old man. <laughs> I message is what I meant to say. You can fax. You can go to your pager. <laughs> Dear God. Some pigeon um, it looks like ad free music through Google Play because everyone's using Google Play. I don't know. That's I so think, snarky. I know. I'm kind of a, an old fart today. <laughs> Um, I kind of have trouble envisioning this show as the thing that's going to make YouTube Red a hit. I hate to say that now. But I just I can't see my like as a consumer, I can't see myself paying ten dollars. And I, I keep going back to that because even when I originally joined Netflix, I wasn't paying ten dollars. It's just recently mm -hmm. when they had the pay hike and I have so many options. Yeah. I feel like you should pull in your audience first and have a little bit more to offer before you say, hey. You have to pay $10. Yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll let go of the $10. No, it's now. okay. I do want to actually come back to this conversation, though, because a lot of times on this show, we sort of have these philosophical discussions about how TV gets consumed, and I really enjoy them. That being said, let's first review the pilot, and yeah. then I want to talk about sort of who its audience is and whether or not it's justified in the money that was spent on it. Quickly about development history, as I mentioned, I mentioned the Tatums at the top. So Channing Tatum and his wife, Jenna Dewan Tatum, mm -hmm. who... Correct me if I'm wrong, but met on Step Up One. Yep. Is that right? I believe that's, that's right. right. Um, yep. Our EPs on this show, but they actually brought it to Holly Sorensen, who is a well-known um, mogul in the world of scripted teen coming-of-age drama. Taylor Gates, what do you know about Holly Sorensen? Okay, well, when I was like in seventh and eighth grade, the show that I would be so excited to watch every week, every Monday, it was was Make It or Break It, and it was also kind of like a um, elite sports type show because it was mm -hmm. about gymnastics and about these. Um, four girls like doing elite gymnastics and I loved it and I, I can definitely see like vibes of that coming back into this show which I think is why I do like it and do want to give it a chance because make it or break it was such like a staple of my own childhood yeah mm -hmm. Yeah, um, so Holly Sorensen created that show. She also created this show. She was an EP on the recently canceled ABC Family show, Recovery Road, which I heard was pretty good. Um, she's also a lovely person. I met her. She was in studio. You can check out that interview on this channel. Um, we had her in studio awesome. and did a long interview. Um, so it seems like this is a good zone for her. She's used to kind of this genre. Interestingly, this show is not a PG show. Not at all. <laughs> Not at all. Um, let's go ahead and have this conversation now. For those who have or haven't seen it, this show has F words, it has N words, it has butts, it has side boob, for lack of a better term, in a strip club. This is a very interesting choice, and one that, as a producer, I would be wary of if I were the one financing this show. What did you guys think of the mix of seeming audience and kind of maturity decisions? It felt, those choices felt almost unnecessary to me. Like they were trying to be edgy. But if this is a show geared towards a sort of, you know, 13 to 17 audience, which I would believe that's kind of the scope of what they're like aiming towards, I don't know that parents are going to be super hype about that. I don't know. That's just me, though. And I don't think that it added anything to the show to have that in there. Mm hmm. If that makes sense. That makes sense. Okay. I'm just. Oh, my thinking face. So I I wrote down these notes. So the bullying, the sexuality, drugs, alcohol, all of that. But I also think that those are things that, as you're coming of age, are things that you really deal with. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking the backdrop of being Atlanta mm -hmm. and being um, lower and middle class, those are real things. And those are things that they have to deal with. Right. So I think that if they were making those choices because they're trying to be real life then it makes sense to me because everything is not you know all pg-13 all the time in real life right it's sure. a good point here's what i want to ask though because taylor you're kind of our guru on this genre um 
the the fosters doesn't necessarily dive into that level of language or visual content do you feel like you can still manage to capture the grittiness of the teenage experience yeah for sure it's definitely it's definitely a different vibe though like and this is more probably realistic because not mm-hmm. there's not going to be you know sensors when you're like in real life it's also a different setting like the fosters is like san diego and it's kind of like a wealthy sort of area and this is like i know they mentioned it's like sort of a school for more low income and it's like atlanta and it's just a different it's just a different setting right and so i I agree maybe it is truer to the setting i grew up in like the midwest and so i'm not super like familiar with this right but yeah i don't know i don't know i think you could defend the choices as well though that's a good point yeah, I guess this kind of question, and Bree, just please hop in whenever you want, um, but I think this question kind of transitions us to um, the writing of the show, which I think, at least for me, was sort of what I found the most problematic. It's not that it was a poorly plotted show, it's just that I, I sort of found moments of the pilot a little disingenuous, especially in the way these characters were speaking. And it's funny because they want to create the gritty realism of a show like The Shy. So that's a show where you hear middle schoolers drop the F-bomb. But something about that show felt so much more believable than this show. Do you know what I mean, Linda? I absolutely know what you mean. And I, I, yeah, sorry, I was just please be, yeah. what you said. I, it definitely did feel like whoever wrote it didn't understand these characters and how they were supposed to talk. Yeah. And so while I appreciate the avenue of exploration of let's have these characters talk like real teenagers, I didn't believe that I, them as teenagers mm-hmm. in the way they were speaking. Some of the time I did, but there was just a couple lines where it's like, ooh, that feels like um, what you think they would say, like maybe what an older woman would think these kids would yeah. say rather than what they would actually say. I don't know. It makes me wonder like what the makeup of their writer's room is. I don't know. I just... The right, and it was a well plotted episode, structurally sound, but I just felt like specifics of the dialogue were what I had problems with. Yeah. What's interesting is that, because I looked it up, uh, there's a lady called Rachi, Rachi, and I could be saying it wrong, sorry, Jeffrey, who uh, was a producer on Insecure, mm-hmm. which has a total different mm-hmm. uh, vibe, and she's also written on Daytime Divas. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, I think that they have the diversity in the writing room so That's I'm not good. sure I'm not sure what the disconnect was it's so funny because I feel like one of the big problems in Hollywood right now is that writers rooms tend to skew so young a lot of people say there's a lot of ageism in writers rooms um, which is true and a great writers room should have every kind of both race experience and age represented it almost feels like they could have used a teenager or like a someone in this writers room who was a little younger yeah and granted this is a a single pilot written by one person, but Tina Fey talks about how her writer's room was mostly SNL alumni, but she hired Donald Glover, who, of course, is now Childish Gambino, who Mm -hmm. created... I mean, he's Donald Glover. But he was 21 when he was hired to write in the 30 Rock Room. And Tina Fey's like, you know, we just needed someone to tell us how teenagers talk because none of us remembered. So it makes me wonder kind of what the makeup of their room was. Just one example of a moment when I was like, ooh, I don't believe that that's what I would really hear was they're at this Wings restaurant, which is a recurring location in the pilot, and someone walks up to the counter and says, can I have a Coke? And the owner says, oh, what kind of Coke do you want? Because that's something that happens in the South, apparently. But then there's a five-second pause, and the guy goes, I'm from the South. And in the South, what we do is when we say Coke, we actually mean a different kind of soda. And there was just, like, a couple moments when I was, like... Like, over-explaining. Yeah. Like, the reason I said this is because of this. And I was just like, ah, that hurts when you see that in a pilot. Mm -hmm. Because there's so many more elegant ways to characterize. Right. You have to trust that your audience remembers and is smart enough to kind of know that on its own instead of spelling it out. Yeah. There was one more specific moment when we're watching the dance, this really epic dance routine of the alumni, and we encounter a character we had already met. And one of our main characters goes ooh, we had a bad interaction last night at a party and I don't think she likes me. And it was just like, oh. Yeah. 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 I just think those specific moments were my biggest problems with the pilot. Yeah. That actually stood, again, that stood a lot for me to that moment because would you actually say that in real life? Even if, even not as a teen, just as a person, you might think it in your head, but you wouldn't say it like that. You would maybe like wait until you were leaving or something. Not in like, the minute you see him in a crowded yeah, club, like yeah. I don't know, yeah, it felt weird to me as well. Yeah, this is just a moment where, as a director, you would just love to see her react. You know, all we need to see is her face. Just 
and then as an audience, we're smart enough. Don't you don't need to insult us by having characters repeat what we already know. Right, right because we were there with you. Right, exactly. But this is I'm gonna stop shitting on this pilot now <laughs> because there's a lot I liked, and that's just my biggest problem. That's stuff that can get fixed, right. and that's stuff a lot of great shows have shaky pilots. So again, that's the challenge with this show sometimes is we're reviewing single episodes of television. Um, there's a lot I liked about this pilot, one of them being the performances. How did you guys feel about this cast and these characters? Taylor, let's start with you. Yeah, I felt like they were very authentic. I feel like they knew who their characters were. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought that they were very multi-talented, obviously. They could act, they could dance, you know. Mm-hmm. They could play some of the more lighter comedic moments, but then get really emotional and dramatic. And being able to play both of those equally well is a really tough beat and I think they did a great job especially considering that they're all pretty young Mm -hmm. I love them I love that I didn't know the characters like the actors yes um so it really allowed me to watch the story yeah so I thought that they all did a great job for what they were given Mm -hmm. and I think that uh, they definitely had a lot of range um and I felt a creative vibe I guess that's that's what I mean so yeah, I, it is nice. You can kind of disappear in television shows when you don't know the actors associated with. Mm-hmm. If you haven't seen work from actors, it's easier to just buy their character right away. Um, one performance in particular I really like is Faze on Love playing Uncle I Al. Is he? What's he from, Linda? Uh, I can't remember. He's a stand-up uh, oh, okay. comedian, and he has been in a bunch of things, and he's super funny. Um, I was very charmed by him. Yeah. And this is a character that I feel like done wrong could be so cringy. Right. I thought it was really, they didn't go the cliche route. He no. could have been, you know, like the abusive un- uncle. Yes. Or like the overly nice uncle. And he walked that line between being, you know, strict, but yeah. also he's like very, like you said, charming. Like he greets them at, uh, like when he's picking them up at the little sign. Yeah. Like he's so cute. I loved him right away. Yeah. I will say that was one of my favorite parts of the pilot was that at the airport and everyone with these really fancy like printed signs and he has this little cardboard sharpie written sign. Yeah. yeah. I think that just gave you like a great first impression of who this character is going to be moving forward. Yeah. For sure. Dev, I think he's my standout from the pilot. Um, and an example of I think where this show could thrive. Mm-hmm. You know, it was... This pilot was by no means a failure to me. Just there was some, I had some problems. But mm-hmm. man, he is busy. Phase on love. I'm embarrassed. I'm sorry. I didn't know who you were. I'm looking at you now, and you've done a lot. Yeah. Um, I like these two leads too. These twins, Lauren McLean. You said is actually from um, Make It or Break It. Is that right? Um, I don't think so. You said? Did you say you recognized her from something though, or no? I don't think so. I don't think I recognized any of them except Naya Rivera. Yeah, Naya Rivera was in Neo. Um, but these, so the leads of the show, for those who haven't seen it, and of course, the longer you listen, the more you're going to get spoiled. But um, Lauren McLean and Patrice Jones are playing Janelle and Tal Baker, who are twins. Mm-hmm. Um, Tal is a, I think, recently out of the closet twin who's trying to find his way. I thought they offered nice performances. And mm-hmm. one of the things that I think is a credit to them is they really acted their way through what I thought was some wobbly dialogue in a convincing way. There were some moments when I thought, hmm, in the hands of a lesser actor, that would have sounded much worse. So I have to credit, I think, all these performances. I also just want to shout out to the dancers in this because they were phenomenal. Yes. And one thing that I think happens a lot in Hollywood is they hire, like you guys said, like these were a lot of people that we did not necessarily know. But that it happens in Hollywood with singing and dancing that they hire people that are names to recognize mm-hmm. who necessarily aren't the best singers or dancers. So I really enjoy that they got professional dancers to do this. Yeah, I agree. And with that being said, let's talk about the dancing because obviously that's a huge part of the show. In the same way that the music was essential to Glee, the dancing is essential to this show. How do we feel about these dance sequences? I love them. Yes. I love that there was tap. I love that there was ballet. I, I love that there was hip hop. I and like I loved it. I thought it, yeah. I thought they did an amazing job, and they weren't like super long dance segments. Um, they were just enough for me. I agree. I think they were a good amount that they added to the story instead of just distracting with like a whole music video in yeah. the middle of it. And they were shot really cool. Going back to the cinematography, like there was all the smoke and the cool, like almost reflective floor. Yeah. And I love watching dance. I don't know anything about it, but I had a good time watching it. Except in one scene, there was trampolines in between the stages, and they didn't <laughs> use the trampolines, and it made me so sad because I was so excited about it. But <laughs> other than that, I that does it. feel crazy to not to have those trampolines it there was and just such, like, slap you in the yeah, face. Yeah, it was so they were faking me out. Um, yeah, this dancing's fantastic. I mean, I'm not even a huge fan of dance necessarily but I 
If this wouldn't have worked, I'd be very worried about this show because you know there's a lot of dancers who are going to, that's the thing they're excited about. Mm -hmm. So I'm glad that this is the thing they nailed because that's really the ki- that's the gimmick, right? Not in a bad way, but just if you're going to spend this much money on a show, you've got to deliver. And the dancing, at least, I think was very successful. I wonder if they had to audition for Channing Tatum because he is a dancer. So oh. I wonder if the dancers had to audition for him or if he oh. choreographed any of this. Himself. Yeah, I don't know. That's interesting. It would be intimidating to come on set and know that Channing Tatum is there. But um, So it sounds like we all agree that the dancing was great. Linda, you were going to say something and I interrupted you. Yeah, go ahead. Um, well, I actually was going to move on to something else. So before we do, um, yeah, go ahead. Um, I was just going to say that the executive, one of the executive producers, um, Adam Shankman, mm-hmm. he actually said in an interview online that uh, the reason they chose uh, YouTube Red for this specific platform is because most people watch dance videos on YouTube. Mm. That's really smart, actually. Yeah, let's talk about... I want to talk about this decision to um, put this on YouTube Red. We started having this conversation already. Um, do we think this show makes sense as a YouTube Red's first big outing? And do we think it has the potential to make... YouTube Red, a streaming competitor to a Netflix or a Hulu. Those are big questions. That is, a, those are these are all big questions. To, go ahead. I feel like it does make sense mm-hmm. because, I mean, we have all these viral social media stars like that got their start on YouTube or have YouTube channels now. Especially since Vine, like you know, quit for a while. I guess it's coming back, but all of the Vine stars went to YouTube, and now we have these huge people there Mm -hmm. and so that's kind of the demographic I think that the show is going for yeah so they'll already be there they're probably advertising I would assume like in between all of these Mm -hmm. videos that the the kids are are watching so I think it makes sense all the I know I'm 21 but (laughs) the kids guys um but yeah I think it makes sense and I while it's not perfect I think that it could I think it could it could get there because I, I feel like this felt sort of like a Netflix show at some point. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And Netflix just released, I haven't seen it yet, but it's the movie like Stepsisters. Yeah. Which is kind of the same sort of thing, I think. So I feel like it could be competitive if they just, you know, they have to work a little bit, but I feel like it could be a good first step. Mm-hmm. I agree. I think that it's the perfect platform for this show specifically. Yeah. I feel like Overall, I like overall. I think it's a good show in its genre. Mm-hmm. It's just not for me specifically. Um, but I do wish that YouTube would have released more original content, not just like piecemeal. Well, I bet they're planning to. But I feel like they should have released it all. Like I'm still trying to justify, you know, subscribing. Like what would make me subscribe and pay ten dollars? See, that's why I disagree with that this is the perfect platform for the show because I don't think it's going to get watched. Well, I think that not enough people are subscribers of this YouTube Red yet. I don't think they've gotten big enough, and I don't know. I didn't even know this show existed until you brought it up to do on the sh- on the after show. Right. So I don't know how the advertising is for it, or if people know it exists out there. And I don't know if I see this on my sidebar that I'm like ten dollars. I'm in for to watch this show. I will say that they've been doing a pretty good job advertising on social media, though, because I have seen tweets about it, mm-hmm. like the sponsored tweets, and they're getting the um, the accounts like for the original step movies to interact with them. And I'm assuming those have quite a few followers. So I think that they're mainly gearing it towards the you. like social yeah, social media advertising. And that's actually a good sign because you really are the demo for this show. Mm-hmm. More than me and Linda. And I'm young and you are and you're young, but like you're actually younger than we are, which doesn't happen super often on this show. But um, it is I'm guessing this would be like a 16 to 22 kind of show. Mm-hmm. And so the fact that you're seeing a lot for this means maybe they are doing this really targeted advertising, which I think is smart. I mean, and actually to push back against what you were saying a little bit, Linda, I mean, it was one of you two. Um, you're worried that this piecemeal releasing, like you said, they might need to do a bigger rollout of original mm-hmm. content. You think Netflix released um, House of Cards six months before any new show, and then Orange is the New Black came that summer. I mean... I think it's not uncommon for streaming services to bank on a hit, to kind of gamble on a hit. But those two platforms also had other options. They also had other things for me to watch besides their original content. That's true. So Netflix, 
originally pulled me in for a series that I wanted to see again and again and older mm. movies that I wanted to see again and again. And then they started their original content. I was like, oh my gosh, that's great. But I was already a subscriber. Yeah. I'm saying both with Hulu and Netflix. They, correct. They pulled people in before they started doing Exactly. So this that's what I'm saying. Like what's gonna make me yeah. want to spend ten extra dollars to watch just this one show? Like what else yeah. are you giving me on YouTube Red? That's my question. Has YouTube Red released movies though? Like original movies? I thought I saw yeah, I an advertisement right. for it. And I thought that they were kind of using the gimmick of all these established kind of YouTube stars were starring in this movie. I could be yeah. wrong, but I thought I saw this like last summer. No, you're right. Yeah, here we go. The Thinning with Logan Paul, who of course has had a rough year. Yikes, but yeah. Um, Laser Team from Rooster Teeth. I know that we do a lot about these Rooster Teeths. Um, the, te the teeth of the rooster. I don't know what rooster teeth is, in case you guys can tell. Camp Camp, that's rooster teeth. That's the only thing I know. Um, yeah, this is just not my world at all. But, oh, Lily Singh did a documentary. Yeah, it does. Oh, Gigi Gorgeous. I remember seeing that, the posters in the, the um, bus stations. So it does, You, they're trying. And they might be really grabbing this 16 to 20-year-old demo. I just think this probably really isn't for for us. Because, like, if these super fans are already subscribed to this to watch that movie, yeah. then they'll probably see that on their feed or whatever and can watch it, not for free, but they're already signed up to do it, and so they don't have to pull anyone in. They already have that crowd. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I, I agree that they need some some work, and it's going to be hard to get more subscribers, but maybe there is this whole world of people who are already subscribed that we just don't know about yet. That's fair. That's a fair I just statement. think, had this pilot have knocked my socks off, I'd be like, this could be the tipping point. Mm -hmm. In the same way that I do think Orange is the New Black, I do think brought in a lot of non-Netflix subscribers, because that show is just so good. I, I don't know if this is the show that's going to do that. And I will say, the other, I think, mistake with this show is, if you're a 16-year-old kid and you say, Mom, I really want to watch... I really want YouTube Red because of this new dance show. And she previews the show. She's she probably no. Right. There's side boob and butts and F words. <laughs> Sorry, haven't... guys. I just looked at this one quick fact. It's just yeah. kind of interesting to me. It said, if the company can ultimately migrate 10% of its uh, more than 1 billion users to Red, Radin estimates that powers that be at YouTube would be happy. Such an audience would place Red above leading subscription services like Netflix and Spotify. I get that because mm. you think... I mean, even if one in ten people has a um, Netflix account, I think one in three people have a Gmail, which means you have a YouTube account. So, like, yeah. if they could get even 5% of those to, it's I'm sure. Millions of people. Yeah. Millions, millions and millions. So, I don't know. I just, I think it was a weird choice to, I'm surprised they didn't push a more teen-friendly tone. Mm. It's teen-friendly content, but it's just the tone felt a little bit like something a parent wouldn't green light for their kid. I don't know. That's just my thought. I, I agree with you. I think that if that the demo is 16 to 20, then a lot of parents are going to have a hard time saying, hey, yeah, go ahead and watch this series. Mm -hmm. But then again, you know, if you can download it on your phone on YouTube, you can pay $10, you're going to do it. Yeah, for sure. Another thing I want to quickly say about this show, I kind of wish, one, the pilot had focused more on the actual high school and two, I wish it felt like more of an ensemble show than just these two twins. I think it's hard not to think of Glee as an analog to this show. And the things I loved about Glee were being in high school with them and having a big ensemble of colorful characters. We will get more of that, but I felt like this was a lot of being sad with these two twins about their alcoholic mom. I agree 100%. I thought the show was strongest when it was at the high school, and I'm assuming the guy is going to come into the high school, too. Like, right. It wouldn't make sense for him to stay at the other one. But I I agree. It, it also gave me some Friday Night Lights vibes a mm -hmm. little bit, you know, in the South with the high school, just all of that. And Friday Night Lights was a very successful ensemble cast, and so I think that if they do start focusing more in on the stories and inner thoughts of the other characters, it could give the show more shades, if that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. They're definitely shooting, Friday Night Lights shoots on long lenses, so you get mm -hmm. that kind of documentary feel and intimate acting scenes, yeah. and yeah, it's got some of that. Again, very well directed, I thought, and really beautifully shot. So I have high hopes for this show. I know I've been a little hard on it, but I've met Holly, and I thought she was a really, really lovely person, and obviously she's a genius because she's had a lot of success in this genre, mm -hmm. so... 
I like seeing original shows. I know this is a franchise show, but I like seeing these kind of shows make it. And I do get excited for fledgling platforms because who knows what else YouTube Red could bring. Could bring. You think each of these platforms, Hulu brought us Handmaid's Tale, Amazon's brought us Transparent, Netflix has brought us, I mean Netflix. So it'd be amazing if YouTube could, if it continues to flourish, bring us an amazing new show. So true. I like that there was so much diversity on the show. For sure. Um, Thanks for bringing that up. I think that that was so important considering like when we talked about um, last week's show, why can't I think of the name of it? Mm, my brain is gone. It, anyways. Wait, wait. What was it? No, I'm trying to think too. I'm what like... was the network? What was it about? <laughs> You're terrible. <laughs> was it? Oh, it was Counterpart. Counterpart. It was Counterpart. Thank oh, yeah, so white. Right. So it was just very it, apparent to me that there was definitely like a diverse cast and they they made those choice conscious choices uh-huh and then i also liked the fact that there was an lgbtq component to it because i think that that's really real more real life mm-hmm. yeah that stuff i like a lot too mm-hmm. and i think they'd be smart to really dig into that component of the show mm-hmm. any other thoughts on how this is being distributed youtube red the show itself I always enjoy our conversations. I feel on the like, show. I mean, I already know that this is not something that could happen, but I feel like they should just release all of these on YouTube regular and pull people in and then say, hey, you know what? If you want to see like the next season or the next whatever, then subscribe. Because I'm really having a hard time. Like, I, I know we just talked about it, but I'm just really having a hard time seeing how they're going to pull in the viewers. Well, Just they released this. four, and like Taylor, you're probably gonna watch the second one. Yeah. If you find that you love it by episode four, would you consider paying for a month of YouTube Red? The thing is, though, I'll pay for one month and then I'll cancel Deactivate. it because there's nothing else there to watch after this. Which has been my point. Rewatch it. That's why I think even if they had like three dollars or four dollars, right. that's like so much more reasonable than ten. Yeah. Yeah. It is interesting, though, because I do bet there will be people who do that and subscribe to finish the season and then just don't cancel their subscription. You know? Oh, forget. That's yeah? how they get you. That's how they get you. I, I could see this show drawing a large audience, even if it's not for me. Because mm-hmm. I think it does have a lot going for it. And, yeah, again, I was very impressed. I was a little underwhelmed by the writing, but very um, my expectations were far exceeded by the um, presentation and production design. And the lighting. <laughs> the lighting. Bree, anything else that you have to say about Step Up High Water? Um, no, I think we've kind of covered it all. I guess the only thing maybe to add would just be back big, piggybacking off of Linda was like it is um, refreshing to see them kind of include this LGBTQ story, um, especially in a, a city like in the South mm-hmm. that's a, a majority of diverse community because that's you know what moonlight did and mm-hmm. that was what was so special and unique about moonlight and why we all enjoyed watching that it's mm-hmm. a good point it's uh, interesting to see the lgbt narrative not in a white narrative yeah because it is different i think in different um different racial lenses yeah i hope they take it to different places though because i know we were kind of talking about while we were watching it like him just getting beat up which is something that happens but We've kind of seen that a lot, and it is... Yes. You know what I mean? I hope that they give him something fresher. It's the conventional choice. I agree. It's a bummer to see the only character get savage, the Mm -hmm. only gay character get savage, because it's like, oh, of course the gay character gets brutally beaten. And I mean, granted that happens, but that was one of the many times in this pilot when I was not surprised. Um, and it's I would a little cliche. Yeah, I think to say that this pilot didn't have cliche moments would feel a little disingenuous to me. Um, and it's a bummer. You always you don't you don't. It's nice to see a show where a gay character doesn't get brutally savage in the first episode. Um, but I don't know. I mean, like I w- I I would be excited about this show if it surprised me more. I think that's what I would enjoy to see as the show goes on. Um, but what did you guys think? Let us know in the comments what you guys thought of Step Up High Water. Um, again, we, we would run an after show possibly if you guys were really excited about it. And granted, we stream on YouTube and this show is streaming on YouTube. So for those of you who are watching on YouTube, I'd love to know your thoughts. The pilot through episode four are up there for free. Let's quickly rate these out of five. I'm giving this a 2.9 out of five. I'm going to give it a 2.6. I'll give it a 3.3. How about you, Bree? I'm so excited. This is my first rating system. Yes. Um, I 
For me, personally, we'll give it a 2.6. Okay. That's so funny. I rated it. Oh, not the highest because you gave it a 3.3. 3. I always feel like I like crap on these shows and rate them high. Yeah. <laughs> I have do. a problem. <laughs> um, last, do you guys think this will make a second season? I feel like it's still kind of too early to tell. It's too early to tell. we don't know how. I haven't actually even read any reviews for it yet. Uh, Variety gave it a nice review. Yeah. I saw that review. It was very mm-hmm. nice. Yeah. Was it was it just the pilot or all of the episodes? I didn't look. It was the, right. whole, the whole thing. The whole thing. The whole thing. Yep. They might get better than The EP says that she doesn't know yet. Even though they're like invested in it, it, it remains to be seen. I think if this was on a platform like Network or even HBO Showtime, somewhere along those, those lines, it would get a second season. I just think, unfortunately, because this is the platform they're putting it on, it won't get enough views to... That's my personal thought. Yeah, you're predicting that the show won't be enough of a hit to justify a second season. Although, I, f- I see, like, very, very, like, small similarities between this and Netflix's One Day at a Time, if anyone has seen that, because they touch on a lot of the like, real-life issues mm. and sort of, they're a little more, obviously, family-friendly, but a little, like, teen-centric issues. Yeah, yeah. And that, it did well season one, but it kind of just kept taking off and taking off, um... Once it found like its audience, it took a while, but then it got quickly renewed. It's already renewed for season three now. So I feel like if this show does find that audience and is like, especially on social media, is so important. And I think it's going to be so important for this show. Yeah. If it gains traction there, I feel like it could go a couple more seasons. What they should do is release, wait a month, but then release the first season on Netflix or Hulu, and then say season two is being released exclusively on YouTube Red. Yeah. That's what I'm trying. Oh, that's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. You got to release it all, let people get hooked in, and yeah. then be like, okay, you want more? It's ten bucks. Yeah, you're jumping yeah. the gun by yeah. just doing half the season. But maybe, maybe they know something that we don't know. Maybe they're gonna blow us out of the water. It's you know, and yeah. it's gonna pick up, and that's gonna be the next viral show. Yeah. I honestly hope it is. Like, I really do want the best for this show because I think it's got a good spirit. Yeah. yeah. Um, good well. Topics. I would love to know what you guys think of Step Up High Water and, again, whether or not you think we should run an after show. I'm also curious to hear people's thoughts on the release model. Do you think YouTube Red is the best place for this show, and do you think YouTube Red has hope? Um, And I'd be curious in the comments. Let us know if you're a YouTube Red subscriber or not. Yeah. Um, Anyways, guys, my name is Jeff Graham. Thank you for tuning in. Taylor, thank you for guesting with us this week. This was so much fun. Good. I thought so, too. Um, If you guys want to find me online, you can do so at Jeffrey C. Graham. On Fridays, I host a show called The Unproduced Table Read, where we read un- unproduced pilots and features. And you should check it out. Thanks for watching, guys. Hi, D. Hi, Sam. We miss you. Uh, all across social media, Linda is so girly. Thanks for joining us. Bree, thank you so much for all your insights. Yes, thank you, Bree. And my name is Taylor Gates. You can find me on Twitter at alphabet underscore Anne and on Instagram at Taylor underscore Gates underscore. And I had so much fun with you guys. Thank Yay. you, Taylor. Thanks for being here. Of course. You're tuning into the destination. I thought Brie was going to say this. Too. Me too. Sorry, I was not, I'm not used to saying my outro. <laughs> no worries. Uh, Before we go, Brie. Before we go, you guys can find me at pfibs14 on Twitter and Instagram. We're professionals. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> From executive producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz, Buzz you later. later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.